tropical islands seem the same to outsiders stopping in for a visit. Of course, I'm not an outsider. I grew up swimming in beautiful warm waters full of coral reefs, learning about boating and fishing. We lived in a small seaside village that had a real sense of family, close and safe. People knew each other for generations, and everybody took care of everybody else, made sure everybody was doing all right. That's the way it should be. It's probably why I became an eagle rider. by a tourist visiting Aluna Bay. International news crews have since provided us with this dramatic aerial footage. A blizzard in the middle of the South Pacific, gentlemen. I'm sure everyone will agree with me that such a meteorological phenomenon is almost unheard of in human history. What's even more disturbing is the description of the storm. It sprang up suddenly, violently froze the island chain, and then disappeared without a trace. Go ahead, Dr. Kane. There's more here than meets the eye. Geographical studies show that weather cycles bring on an ice age every 70,000 years or so. It builds up slowly over time. That's precisely my point. Any natural change would happen gradually. It would follow an established and predictable pattern. This storm was created artificially. artificially. <laughs> I have some supporting evidence to back up my claim, gentlemen. Just before the storm struck, our weather satellite recorded a magnetic intrusion of the Van Allen radiation belt, which surrounds the Earth. Incredible! You expect us to believe that someone has a weapon that can burst through the radiation belt and change weather patterns down here? And what would be their purpose? I think the answer to your question is obvious. Anyone who controls the weather controls all living things on the planet. This was an attack by the Vorak. There must be a way to fight this. I hope you're right. I've dispatched the Eagle Riders to the South Pacific. They're under orders to find and destroy that weapon. Well, Eagle Riders, it seems that the deep freeze hasn't affected any of the other islands out here. Look at that water. It's crystal clear. I hope I can spend some time fishing while we're here. I feel like a boy again. I'm not so surprised since you were born near the ocean. Hey, I remember that. It was quite an event, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me hit the high points. A mother walrus gives birth to a falling baby boy. Huh? Mickey. When you were old enough, you had an orthodontist put braces on your tusk. You were able to shave off your mustache, but you kept your baby fat. <laughs> hey, Buck Brain, you're cruising for a bruising. Cut it out, you two. This isn't some game. Get back to work. You're supposed to be watching your boards, not making jokes. Wait, something's visible down there. <gasps> Oh, no. Look at all those poor fish. They must have frozen to death when the blizzard came through. This is bad news. The entire food chain could be in danger. If the fish were affected to this extreme, what about the smaller forms of life? If the plankton and coral are wiped out, it'll take generations to restore this area. And the condition of the ocean affects the balance of every ecosystem on Earth. Something's showing up near our flight path. It seems to be a magnetic storm. I'd better take my tracker and check it out. Hey, guys, send me. Please, it's important to me. This storm might be the key to what's happening around here. All right, Ollie, but keep in touch with me by comlink. I'll maintain an open line the whole time I'm out there. Hunter, this is Ollie. I'm launching the LCAP. Tell me what's happening, now! I'm having trouble with my stabilizers. The current out here is really strong. Hunter, our radar is inoperable. Warning! Gyrokinetic thrusters on overload! Loss of attitude control is imminent! Get this bird out of here, Otto. Laying in new coordinates, now! Report to the Global Security Council, number G5X10. Submitted by Ali Kiyawani. Unfortunately, my story begins with me regaining consciousness after losing control of the outcat over the South Seas. 
It's night. Where am I? Hmm. The place looks deserted. Well, this is just great. Half a dozen sharks between me and the shore. Oh, boy. They're heading right for me. Ah. Hey, pal, it was self-defense. I assure you, those sharks are no threat to you. You must not harm them. Who are you? And how can you be so sure they're not going to attack me? I am Makaha. I raised these sharks from birth. They are friendly to all men. I suppose I'll have to take your word for that. Malanox. Malanox. Ooh, I am ready for your judgment, which I know will be insightful. Imbecile! You assured me this weapon was fully functional. I'm very sorry, evil one. Up until the time we activated the device, everything was working perfectly. We had no reason to suspect the power matrix would fail. Enough! The Global Security Council will be sending a response team to the area. Don't worry. The magnetic field barrier will protect us from attack by hostile troops. This fortress is virtually impregnable. Within the next 12 hours, you will blast an enormous hole through the Earth's radiation belt. This will open a passage to the sun and create a permanent crust of ice over the planet's surface. Do not fail me. He's becoming less and less patient with our errors. One more mistake and it's bye-bye. I wonder why it's so important to clear a passage all the way to the sun. I better find out how we're doing. I can't afford any more slip-ups. We're almost ready to begin testing. Cybercon will accept no further excuses on your part. My lord, we're running a few more tests on the integrity of the power matrix, and when we're done, we should be operating at full efficiency. Keep at it, you have till morning. Then this weapon has to work. Yes, yes sir! sir! Before I'm through, the people of this planet will become slaves in my empire of vice. <laughs> Thanks for your help. I don't know what the trouble is. Uh, you're lucky I have strengthened my legs. This machine is no good, not built well. Why keep it? We go way back. She's tougher than she appears. She's pulled me through some scrapes. I owe her my life. I think machines are evil. And humans, too, although you seem to have an honest face. Thanks. You're the first person who's noticed, other than me, of course. I work with the Eagle Riders, a group of folks who travel the world fighting nasty aliens and protecting the planet. That's your job? Well, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. We had better eat soon. Such responsibilities must give you a very big appetite. I doubt I'll be able to eat much. Thanks for the appetizer. From what I've been observing, I suspect you were a fisherman at one time. My father used to take me fishing, but we never caught anything this good. Yes, up until six months ago, my people lived off the fish of this reef. Then the people and the fish disappeared. Well, tell me what happened. They came to me and said a devil had taken over our reef. I refused to believe them, but before long, the fish began to die off. Where did everybody go? Most of them moved to the island that froze when the big storm came through. The devil chased them from that island, and I've had no word of them since. I'm willing to bet that devil has a name, and it's Malinox. Farm cold. <laughs> this will give those simple minds something to talk about over their coffee this morning. <laughs> Attention! All settings for the subsonic vortex beam have now been completed. Master Melanox, we are ready to proceed. <laughs> we can now begin to destroy the human race. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mickey, were you able to find out what happened to Ollie's tracker? I haven't been able to raise him at all, and I'm afraid his transponder has been damaged. What do we do? What? Uh oh. It's snowing. Someone must be using that weapon again. Let's go. We'll have to search for Ollie after we get back. We have a class one emergency. I'm picking up a transponder beacon. It must be coming from the Owl Cat. Great. Mm. Hang on, Makaha. We'll be okay as long as the wood holds out. I'm gonna get you to a hospital just as soon as I'm able to make the repairs on my tracker. Ollie! Huh? We followed your signal. Come on. We have to move out as fast as possible. But first, we have to get my friend to a doctor. He's the one who rescued me. Huh? <gasps> He was ill before any of this started happening, and the snowstorm really hit him hard. I'm sorry. I know we've been given specific Ari, orders, and... listen to huh? me. You and your friends have an important job to do, and I don't want to leave my island. You're much too sick to be left alone. If I don't help you now, I might not make it back in time. Don't worry about me. I have vowed to stay here to protect my home. I am the last of my people to remain behind. When the devil appeared and the reef began to die, everyone else took their families and moved on to islands of greater abundance. But I was born in this place, and I shall remain here till my last breath. <laughs> but, Makaha... My friend, I want you to take something with you. I would be honored if you would carry my spear on your mission. It will protect you. Sir, thank you. You must conquer this devil who threatens to bring such misery and pain. He's passed out. Kelly, isn't there something we can do for him? We don't have the proper equipment. I'm sorry, Ollie. I don't mean to be insensitive, but if we don't find that weapon now, we may be responsible for the destruction of the planet. <gasps> I know this man saved your life, and you don't want to leave him, but what about the millions of people who are counting on you to come through? Don't they deserve your best efforts? I have to go, Makaha, but I'll be back. Warning! Security! On the viewer. Blast it all! It's the Eagle Riders! We've been discovered somehow! I'm reading a strong magnetic source from the reef below. Jack! Got it. Depressurize! Bring the fortress to the surface! of that structure. Hmm. That must be the devil, the one Makaha was talking about. like a giant magnet. None of the Ultra Eagle systems were responding, and we weren't doing so well ourselves. <laughs> How fascinating! The Eagle pinned to our fortress, and the Eagle Riders inside is helpless as bugs on flypaper. Nothing works in this electromagnetic field. We're defenseless if the Vorak attack. There must be something we can use. Huh? Makaha Spear. I gotta try it. It's our only chance. There's enough dynamite tied to this spear to blow apart anything in the fortress. That contraption up there seems to be the one generating the magnetic field. Time to turn off the power. for you, 
Kaha. I know your aim is true. Tell me, how were you able to destroy that fortress? Ah, uh, there was really nothing to it. I just threw a little wrench into their works. Red alert! Level B is ordered to evacuate immediately. Repeat, evacuate! The magnetic generator in the vortex core has been damaged and energy levels are now approaching critical. Impossible! It was working! Level B1 and D2 are in danger of structural failure. the last of me. Before I'm through, the people of Earth will be begging for mercy, and you Eagle Riders will pay for your insolence, I swear! You may have won this battle, but believe me, you'll never win the war! <laughs> about your friend, Ollie. We all are. I wish we'd had the time to get him to a hospital and still fulfill our responsibilities to the Global Security Council. But Makaha saw the dilemma and made it clear he wouldn't leave the island. We should have taken him with us no matter what he wanted. He would have been alive today. You can't be sure of that. And besides, whenever you're involved in a war, there's going to be a certain number of casualties. It's unavoidable, and you have to accept it. It's not pleasant, but it's reality. It comes along as part of the pledge we took to protect the Earth. There are times when I wish I'd never joined up. We save the world but lose a friend. What good is our power?